Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brethren. Good morning, mommies, daddies, children, brothers and sisters in Christ. Before we start, can we go to the Lord in prayers? Our Father in heaven, we want to bless you for this morning. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us to a brand new day that you have made. Thank you for your word that is open unto us even today. Holy Spirit, we look up to you to open the scriptures unto us. We look up to you to reveal Jesus to us. Go beyond whatever we are reading or hearing. Reach out to us individually. Break the bread of this world. Grant us the grace to take it in and the ability to apply it to our lives. Cause us not just to be hearers of your word, but doers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Our topic for devotion this morning is come for a drink. Come for a drink. And our text is John chapter 4, verse 1 to 26. I'll be running in between this and Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 4. And I'll be making inference to also Luke chapter 9, verse 55, no, 54 down to 56. I may not read those ones, but I will just be inferring to them. So can we continue to read? Please, if you have your Bible, John chapter 4 from verse 1, I'll be reading from here. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy bread, to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself? and his children, and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither Come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. In this says thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh 
when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But they are coming, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As we were told earlier, a topic is come for a drink. Come for a drink. This passage is very, we are familiar with it, commonly known as the Samaritan woman. Incidentally, this was not the first time Jesus was having contact with Samaritans. If we had time at your spare time, you can read Luke chapter 9 from verse 53 down. You discover that Jesus had made attempt before to enter Samaria, but they blocked him. That was when the issue of the disciples, the two sons of Zebedee calling fire from heaven on the Samaritans came about. So Jesus diverted and went another direction. So, but God in his mercy and in his determination to enter Samaria with the gospel chose to pass through this woman to enter Samaria. And it was at the time the disciples had gone to go and get food. Jesus sat by the well. Other scriptures, versions noted that it was at the sixth hour, the third hour. But when I went to a simpler version, I discovered that the time this woman came to fetch water was 12 noon. And I was wondering, no woman goes to fetch water at 12 noon. If you are conversant with the village, it's either early in the morning or late at evenings. But I discovered that there was something peculiar about this woman. That's why if the totality of her life was different, that she could come at that time. And I was thinking, could it be that her life would not allow other women in the village to associate with her? A woman that had married five husbands and was in the house of the sixth. Then you are wondering, how old was this woman at this time that she would have married six husbands? But when you look at the passage, you will now understand why she was in the house of the sixth. Imagine a total stranger asking you for water. And the first thing is that, why are you asking me for water? Don't you know that you are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan? Imagine her in her husband's house. Please, honey, I'm tired. Is food ready? Which food? Did you bring money? Did you drop money? Why are you asking me for food? I began to see the character of this woman. Simple question. But she will drag it. She will turn it into an argument. She will turn it into a quarrel. So when she does that, the man will now say, we well, pack your load and go. She will enter house number two. And what was the next thing that Jesus now asked her? As they began to talk about that, she brought about, the well is deep. You don't have bucket. How will you fetch it? Are you better than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, drank from it, and even the sheep, the cattle drank from it? I've seen a woman that will never keep quiet, a woman that will never submit, a woman that will never learn in silence, a woman that queries everything that the husband says, a woman that questions everything that the husband says. A woman that will quarrel at every slightest thing. A woman that will look for provocation for no reason. This is the kind of woman this Samaritan woman was. And I want us to be checking ourselves. My sister, what kind of a wife are you? What kind of a sister are you? Are you submissive? Are you submissive to authority? Do you learn in silence? Or oh, everything you are asked to do, you must query it. You must question it. 
you must quarrel about it. When there's no reason to quarrel, you draw quarrels for no reason. But when you, as I went further, I discovered that any life that does not have Jesus, that life can never be vacant. The life can never be just emptied like that. There's always something that occupies. By creation, by redemption, we were made to carry Jesus. We were made to bear him about. We were made to carry his life. But in the absence of Jesus in the life of a man, in the life of a woman, the devil occupies it. And when the devil takes occupation of a life, it is what that devil wants. It's what the devil wants that that life will do. So when it's a woman and you see a home that is filled with so much quarrels, a home where there's so much tension at all times, you will just know that the absence of Christ in that life. This evening, this morning, at whatever time you are listening, you are watching, the Bible is bringing an invitation to us. Come and have a drink. Jesus told this woman in verse 10, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given you the living waters. Jesus Christ is the fountain of life. When Jesus takes over your life, your own life becomes a fountain that people draw from. When Jesus takes over your life, your tongue becomes a fountain that when you speak, you speak wisdom. When you speak, you speak spirituality. When you speak, you speak the life of Christ. When you speak, it people you don't need to introduce yourself. People will know instantly, this is a child of God. This is what was lacking in that woman. My sister, have you at any time accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you at any time come to the fountain of life? There's no need of querying, of asking, or denying. The character you exhibit will show whether you have or have not. It was very clear from the life of this Samaritan woman that her character showed the kind of life that he had. Isaiah 51 says that, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsted come, come ye to the waters, and he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and you labor for that which satisfied not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. You can continue from there. Jesus Christ is offering to us free of charge. Salvation has already been paid for. Whatever it is that you are looking for has been paid for. But what you are looking for is embedded in Christ. Colossians told us that it is in him that the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth bodily. Everything that we need is consistent in him. So the Bible says that come and buy free of charge. You don't need to spend money. You don't need to bring anything. Just bring yourself. Come and buy free of charge. It has been paid for. It has been made available for you, paid for fully. Just come. All you need to do is come. And this was what brought the Samaritan woman. When Jesus came, at the point where in verse 13, Jesus said, answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink this water shall thirst no more. The hook was dropped in her in verse 13. All that brought about her running up and down from one man to the other, she came to discover that it was the absence of this living water. It was the absence of the fountain of life in her life. And she said, please give me so that I will not thirst again and I will not need to come here. My sister, have you made that decision? Have you made that choice? Have you come to Jesus? Whatever you are looking for, 
if it is not in Jesus, you will not catch anything. If it is not in Christ, you will labor in vain. Psalm 133 says that, except the Lord keeps the city, except the Lord builds a house, the builder is building in vain. How long will you labor in vain? How long will you build in vain? Don't go long with five, six husbands like this Samaritan woman before you will come for this drink. The invitation is extended to you now. The Samaritan woman never had that opportunity until Jesus came. You, I'm sure you are located in church. You are located in one society or the other in church. You are hearing the word of God on a daily basis. Why will you allow yourself to go for too long without Christ? Why will you allow yourself to drive for long without Christ? Without the fountain of life, the dissatisfaction in your life. Are you not seeing that it is the absence of the fountain of life? Your pursuit of things, your pursuit of material possessions. When you get this, you discover that you are running for the other one. When you have gotten that, you are running for the other one. When you move here, you are pursuing another one. Do you know why? It's because the fountain of life that satisfies you don't have him. And as long as he's not located in you, you will continue to run helter-skelter. You will continue to pursue things. Why will you run for what does not satisfy? Why will you continue to pursue what will not give you peace, will not give you joy? Why will you continue to run when Jesus is standing by and he says, look, see the invitation. Come and drink. Come and have the drink of life that will give you satisfaction, that will give you joy, that will give you peace, that will settle every matter in your life. The quarrels in your home, do you know is the absence of the fountain of life? The quarrels with your children, do you know is the absence of the fountain of life? Because when you come, you come with advice, you come with quarrel. You leave the word of God that changes a man out. So your children may pretend, your husband may even pretend, because they don't want mommy to quarrel. They don't want the, the wife to quarrel. But do you know that the fountain of life gives you wisdom on how to handle every matter? Once you come for this drink, it settles you and settles it forever. Praise the Lord. Verse 21. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me. This was after she had said that you, the, the Jews, you said we must go to the mountain. This one said we must go to Jerusalem. Why we worship on the mountain? My sister, it is the presence of God in a man that brings God's presence to a location. When you carry Jesus, even if you are inside the hole, his presence will be there. The moment the person carrying Jesus is not there, it can be in the temple, it can be in the church. It is not the building that is the matter. It is who is carrying him. Who is carrying the fountain of life draws his presence. Erroneously, the woman was thinking, that okay, when you go to Jerusalem, where the temple is, that is where to worship. Jesus corrected her. And I'm trusting God that that correction will come to us even at this time. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you don't know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But they are coming. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such the Father seeketh to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The word of God. When you come to the fountain of life, there's a transaction that takes place. The natural life is taken out. 
There's a surgery that God does when you come. The life that is argumentative, the life that is quarrelsome, the life that is deceitful, the life that covers up, God takes it out and replaces it with his own life. That is the fountain of life. That is the drink that we have called upon to come this afternoon, this morning, depending on your time. If this surgery has not taken place in your life, the Spirit of God will never dwell in you. And worshiping God correctly will be very difficult, if not impossible. Because it is the Spirit of God that knows the mind of the Father. So the Holy Spirit teaches you. The Holy Spirit guides you. The Holy Spirit directs you. The Holy Spirit instructs you. Even when you sit with the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to introduce, to tell you, this is what the word of God says. So obeying God becomes easy. As a wife, submission becomes easy when you have taken this drink. When you come for this invitation and you submit. As a child, obedience becomes easy when you have responded to this invitation. If you have not responded, you will see obedience as punishment, as suffering. But when you have responded, it becomes easy. Why? You know that it is God's instruction you are responding to. As a husband, loving your wife becomes easy when you have responded. If you have not responded to this invitation, you will, be, you will be quarreling and asking why you should love your wife. You will query it. Look at the way she behaves. Why should I love that kind of a woman? But this drink makes you see things. See your wife the way God sees her. As part and parcel of you. You see that that is who you are. That character in your wife is who you are. That character is your husband, is who you are, you are one. So where to go to is the manufacturer for a change. So as we trust God, we'll go to the place of prayer. This afternoon, this morning, this evening, at whatever time, the invitation is open this morning. Will you allow it to pass you by? Will you allow it to just go like that? This gracious invitation. Why not come? You are not coming to buy. It has been paid for. You are not coming to queue. It is made available and particularly for you. There's your name tag attached to it. It was graciously and freely paid for with your name on it. Come have for a drink. Let's take the summary. On his way to Galilee through Samaria, Jesus sat by the well of Jacob while his disciples went to buy lunch, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well and an encounter ensued between her and Jesus. Jesus carefully showed her what she needed, the living water, which only he can give. This living water refers to the new birth, salvation, which the Holy Spirit imparts. He invited her to ask him for the living water that will forever quench her spiritual thirst and the woman wasted no time in requesting for it. Jesus seeks thirsty sinners to give them the living water, which satisfies the thirsty soul for time and eternity. No sinner is excluded from the offer of this water. Jesus didn't exclude the Samaritan woman from it, and he doesn't exclude you either. To receive this gift of living water, you must recognize that you are thirsty, and that you can never satisfy that thirst by yourself. Then come to Jesus for a drink. His drink does not only satisfy thirst, but it becomes a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. If you continually drink from the world's sources, you will thirst again. So why not come to him for a drink today? Lord Jesus, give me this water of life that I may not be thirsty again. Amen.
Can we go to the Lord as we pray? Come for this drink. How long will you continue to drag? How long will you continue to run after things that does not satisfy? It has been paid for freely. It's made available for you. Nobody knows tomorrow, especially now that people die anyhow. Why not bow your head and plead with the Lord, Father, like the Samaritan woman, give me this drink so that I will not continue to run after things that does not satisfy, things that does not have eternal value. This drink is what will lead you to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the only satisfaction you need. Is the only satisfaction that will give you all that you want, all that you desire for. Can you call on him this afternoon, this morning, this evening? Lord Jesus, thank you for this great invitation. We are very grateful. As many that have listened today were pleading, oh God, the way you did not give up on the Samaritan woman. And you did not give up on me the way you helped me until I came to this. Please, we are pleading in mercy that this pursuit, Father, you will not give up until each and every soul that is here to acknowledge you comes and bows before you in submission. Holy Spirit, don't give rest. Don't quench, O oh God, undertake for us. Any child, every woman, every man, this pursuit, they must come to it. Do it, Lord, for your glory. The salvation that has been paid must not go in vain. It must not be a waste. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.